In this video, we're continuing with question number four. We've already completed the statement of earnings and the statement of changes in equity. We're now going to do the statement of financial position classified. As you know from a previous video, the basic accounting equation for the statement of financial position is assets equal to liabilities plus equity. We already have all the asset and liability accounts denoted. What we have to do for the assets and liabilities is indicate if they are current or non-current. Current assets will be used or consumed in the upcoming 12-month period or operating cycle, whichever is longer. Non-current assets will be used or consumed beyond that point. Current liabilities are the liabilities that will be settled within the upcoming 12 months or operating cycle whichever is longer. Non-current liabilities will be settled beyond that 12-month or operating cycle period. Accounts payable will be settled within the next 12 months. It's a current liability. Accounts receivable, the legal right to collect cash from our customers, will also be settled in the short term. Accumulated depreciation represents the use of the equipment. Equipment is a non-current asset and therefore accumulated depreciation is also. The bank loan is not denoted as either current or non-current. I always assume that bank loans, unless specifically stated, are non-current. Cash is a current asset. Equipment, non-current asset. Inventory is always a current asset. Other assets, non-current, they're already giving us the information. Prepaid expenses, which is when we pay an expense in advance of having used or consumed it, is a current asset unless indicated otherwise. Warranty provision can be either non-current or current. We know it's a liability. It's the provision we make for warranty costs that will happen in the future, which is an obligation and therefore a liability. There's no indication if it's current or non-current. I'm going to make it current. Now notice there's no equities listed here. First, equity section of the Statement of Financial Position is not split between current or non-current. And second, the numbers that we need for the equity section of the Statement of Financial Position come from our Statement of Changes in Equity. The ending balance on the Statement of Changes in Equity tells us not only the order of the accounts listed on the Statement of Financial Position equity section, but also the amounts. Contributed capital will be listed first, and then the amount. Retained earnings will be listed next, and then the amount. And finally, total equity will be listed last with the amount. As you can see, all the amounts necessary for the Statement of Financial Position equity section are on the Statement of Changes in Equity. What we've been asked to do in this question is produce the Statement of Financial Position in good form, which means it can be published. It also says explain the purpose of the Statement of Financial Position. We'll do that afterwards. As always, we start with the company name, then the name of the statement, and then the date. Notice this is the first statement that has the words as at instead of period ending or month ending or year ending. That's because the statement of financial position is at a point in time, one single second. Think of it this way. When you walk out of the house in the morning and you have $10 in your pocket, you go to Timmy's and you spend $2 on a cup of coffee. You drink it. At that point, your statement of financial position has changed. You no longer have $10 in your pocket. Your assets have gone down by $2 and your expenses, because you consume the cup of coffee, have now gone up. That causes your profitability to go down, your retained earnings to go down, and therefore your equity to decline. Between one second before you bought and drank the coffee and the next after you bought and drank the coffee, your statement of financial position has changed. And that's why the statement of financial position is at a point in time as at March 31st, 2018. Finally, we indicate the currency. As noted in the basic accounting equation, assets are always listed first. Then, current assets. Current assets are listed in order of liquidity, how fast they will be converted into cash or used and consumed. 
First, how fast it will be converted into cash. Cash is cash, so it's always listed first. Accounts receivable will be converted into cash fairly rapidly when we collect it from our customers, so it's listed next. Inventory will be sold to either generate cash or produce accounts receivable. It's listed next. Finally, all the items that will be used or consumed to help generate revenue and are never expected to be sold are listed in random order. We've completed our current assets. We need a total current assets subtotal. Let's move on to the non-current assets. First, a subheading, non-current assets. Then, equipment. There are two ways we could list equipment. Equipment, then less accumulated depreciation with a book value or carrying value. I could also do equipment and the word net. This indicate that equipment less accumulated depreciation is being listed as the subtotal on the statement of financial position, and that's what I'm going to do. Note if you look back at our listing of numbers, this is the amount of equipment less the amount of the accumulated depreciation. Other assets. They're always listed last. Other assets are all the assets that are non-current which don't belong in any specific grouping. Because we have more than one non-current asset, we have a subtotal called total non-current assets. And finally, total assets. Now, let's move on to liabilities and equity. Start with the heading liabilities and equity. Current liabilities. List accounts payable first. That's because accounts payable will most likely be settled before the warranty provision. Now list the warranty provision. Subtotal called total current liabilities. Moving on to non-current liabilities. Bank loan. Notice that if there is only one item under a subheading, you do not need to place a total. I don't need total non-current liabilities here. Last subtotal, total liabilities. What if there had been no non-current liabilities at all? Would I have had to put total current liabilities and then total liabilities? And the answer is no. In fact, I could have omitted the total liabilities. The only subtotal I would have to have is total current liabilities if there was no non-current liabilities. Let's move on to equity. Remember that equity is the same amounts and the same order as on the statement of changes in equity. Contributed capital. Retained earnings. Next, total equity. And then finally, total liabilities and equity. That is the end of the statement of financial position. Unfortunately, I can't show you the whole statement altogether because the statement is too large. Let's tie this in to the basic accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. That equal sign is incredibly important and must always be adhered to. We have total assets of 250000 That's equal to liabilities of 66850 plus equity of 183150 Notice the importance of the basic accounting equation. It actually mimics the structure of the statement of financial position. We always start with assets, listed in order of liquidity. We then move on to liabilities listed in the order of when they will be settled, and finally equity, which is listed in the same order as the statement of changes in equity. The basic accounting equation mimics the structure of the statement of financial position. The next part of this question was explain the purpose of the statement of financial position, and I think I'm going to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching.